entropy of your output is fixed essentially, right? By by whatever your, your problem is. So you know the mutual information between your representation and the output can never be larger than what, what is naturally given in the problem. I, I think that that could be interpreted as that. Yes, I agree. The kind of this is the upside of using mutual information because it actually gives us a um, toolkit to see how efficient um, the representations inside neural networks are. But the downside of mutual information would be that um, it requires to for the system to be noisy. So if we don't have noise, then we can't apply mutual information because mutual information between the two. Um, non-stochastic transformations is infinite. So if you have something, if you have a non-stochastic mapping, deterministic mapping between two variables, then by mapping them together, you, you don't lose any information, you don't gain any. So it's just infinite because they share. So, but that kind of depends on that you are, that you have a probability distribution over your input. Yeah. Right? So, so that's not necessarily noise, but it's, yeah. Uncertainty, it, 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 yeah. It doesn't make sense to talk about an entropy of a um, of, of a map, right? Well, what's the entropy of a map? It doesn't make sense. I, I guess uh, the, uh, it's if we use if we look at the probability distribution of uh, two variables, then there needs to be uh, some sort of noise. It can't be just one mapping deterministically transformed into the other. So x and then a deterministic mapping of x would have infinite information. Because well, it, it depends on x, right? So, so because the map itself, if, even if you have a deterministic map. The, the mutual information is then whatever the entropy of your original signal was. So um, that, that's why it doesn't make sense to talk about well, the... No, 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 the mutual information between x and x would be infinite because it's just the same thing. Yeah. If I understand, it's the mutual information between one layer and the next one, right? Mm -hmm. Or the last layer, is that correct? That mutual hmm? It's the mutual information between... One layer like, and, the, and the next one. And the yeah, yeah, no, the representation. So we don't do them sequentially. So we do x layer output, or actually like input layer output, and then we do that for every single okay, okay. layer. So we have um, xt and then ty. And I'll show you in a minute how all of this sort of becomes uh, a visualization. Uh, and the way how this paper addresses the noise issue is that the the, um, the data set itself is noisy, so we have, uh, it was created by a noisy uh, process of mapping a certain x to a certain y. Uh, and they go into some detail here of how that was implemented. So basically it's a synthetic data set and it was made on a um, sphere. They chose uh, 12 uniform points on it and then they were cutting it into diff like in different ways and approximating it with a function and a specific threshold in such a way that they would basically get the 50, 50, approximately 50, 50 percent output. Uh, but what does this actually, all this theory look like in progress, so, uh, in um, practice? So they um, made a very small network, um, fully connected with um, using cross entry DLR function, uh, no regularization. Um, it's only seven layers, and they're very small, so they have 12 inputs, and then they map it into five hidden layers, and then they have two outputs in the end. Uh, and they basically just train this network and save the um, hidden activity, so that's the, what happens after you apply your activation function. Oh yeah, activation function, they use a hyperbolic tangent function, not the most popular value, but uh, this will matter uh, in further uh, papers we can see them uh, next week and what they see is actually that they map the dynamics of what's happening inside before that uh, can, can you elaborate how they measure mutual information because I think that, that was one of the big problems here. That yeah, exactly. Very... Yeah. Estimating mutual information is a very tricky part because it basically boils down to um, probability density estimation. So what this paper did in particular uh, is that they used 
binning. So binning is just basically drawing a histogram. So they took all of the hidden activity, and uh, since they're using hyperbolic tangent, that goes from minus one to one. Um, they just sliced the range into 30 pins, and then they saw what hidden activity fell in which bin. So, so the, the input itself was a one-dimensional input? Or? Yeah. Yeah. So, so then, then they bin that because that itself is also it seems very different, right? If you have a very binary signal, pushing 30 bins on a binary signal is well, not what it means. Binning is a way of discretizing your your variable because it, it comes from a continuous distribution. Yes. And once you bin it, you basically have a histogram. And yes. by comparing different histograms, you can um, calculate the entropy. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's just that if the if the signal, say, say if you have two peaks that are very, very close, the one is centered at zero, one is centered around one, and you make these really, 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 uh, really, really tight, the, 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 then binning essentially is, is somewhat meaningless, right? Yeah. So, so, so that is uh, exactly. So there is a lot of um, like we will go deep into yeah. trying to understand the estimation of visual information yeah. in the next two papers because that was the crux of both of them. Especially so, multi-dimensional distribution becomes impossible with that. Yeah, yeah, thinning doesn't scale. So, yeah. that is so um, what we see here is that they plotted the information that a um, different layers have with the input and with the output here. And the colors represent different layers. So this is your first layer, second, third, and fourth. I think that's for a different architecture. So from the from blue is at the end, right? The blue is over here, and that's your first layer. So the first layer has the most information about your input. And then as you go down, like further into the network, it starts losing information about the input. But, but why does it start with the full information about the output as well? Because binning is not like the best thing. And so is binning just drawing a histogram? Yeah. And measuring yeah. This is basically um, something that is a problem with this paper. And it's a problem with the more deterministic, like the deterministic mapping things. And once again, we can talk about that. Next week or the week after that, there will be more discussion about why this looks like it, the way it's designed. Uh, Excuse but, me. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so the layers on the left, they are the last layers. Okay. The, the yes. Last layers of the this is this the. Is a, it, it, it seems to be a counterintuitive to me because the mutual information represent the correlations between the two models. The information stored in the correlation between the two models. So the last layers are less correlated both with the input and the output as with the, the graph set. Yeah, so like on this <coughs> axis there is a problem of how to measure information between early inputs and the output. So I wouldn't take this aspect into account too much because they use different number of uh, neurons per layer that creates this distortion as well. But their main point is that we need to look at the information that the network has with the input. So this is the x-axis is kind of more important here, and this is for equal zero. So as we start training the the network, and by the way, different dots represent different initializations. So they're all the same kind of layers, but in a different different way initialized. So as we train the network, they first start gaining more information about the input, and then they get to a stable point. And from here. After a of thousands, they start slowly um, shedding that away. They're still gaining more information.